Alert, alert, mishmash sighted. Cleaning the pile of shame. Hello everyone, it's your none favorite but circumstantial imp mishmash. And today is the first episode of Cleaning Out the Pile of Shame. This series will focus on me getting a random miniature done by request from you, the audience. And what do you know, today we've got this scrungly little 3D printed kobold princess thing. Also known as Kobold Magical Girl by Twin Goddess Miniatures. This little mini is just full of character, and I've had her in storage for a long ass time. So you know what? Enough talk, let's get this little crawdad a nice several fresh coats of paint. How about that? Let's go. So first we're going to coat everywhere the kobold's outfit is going to be with pink horror. This is a very thin color, so we're going to be painting in layers. Our white primer will provide a really good base for this color, so we won't need to do too many coats to get an opaque finish. It's not often that I paint with pinks and purples, so this mini was a bit of a challenge for me. And I think providing unique color schemes and techniques I'm not used to will be the formula for the Cleaning Out the Pile of Shame series. My goal is to grow as a painter throughout this channel, and I know for a fact I've missed out on some newer tips and tricks from the past few years. Oh, that's perfect. Time for the skin. We'll be using Jean Steeler Purple, and like the Pink Horror, as you'll see here, this is a super thin paint. Be patient when using this color if you're following along. For legs, I decided to add a little bit of Negroth Knight to make it a little bit more shadowy. This is due to the fact that I felt that her legs weren't exactly primed to the best of my ability, so I felt it was necessary to add a little bit of a stronger color. We'll be blending the colors to make the more exposed parts lighter than the places that would be shadowy. I don't blend too often, as most of my miniatures really do have the natural look from any angle kind of thing going on, very similar to how Citadel paints their miniatures, because that's how I learned. I have been slowly stirring away from this method, and I do think that there is a good balance between.
Here I'm blending Ghost Grey with our Pink Horror for her collar epaulette sort of thing. I don't wear dresses, I don't know what that's called, but the top part of her dress. Also adding in some ghost gray for the little wrappings around her legs. Next, we're going to blend Keldar Sky and Negaroth Night to make a gorgeous shade for her horns. These two colors really blend well together, and editing it made me realize that I'm blending Night and Sky. Way. Also going to be adding this blend to the little scales on her tail. To shade the dress, we're going to take Vallejo model color Sunset Red and blend it with a good amount of Lamian Medium. As you can see, it took me a little moment to get the right amount of opacity in the color. As you can see, throughout the video I'm going to be adding little touch-ups to our miniature. Not everything is perfect, and I think a lot of miniature painters edit this stuff out, but I think it's important to see. For her big ass staff thingy, I mixed elfic flesh with sepia ink for color change and just overall fluidity. Next. 
Next, we'll be taking our good old Drudge the Second and apply it all over our skin. To begin highlighting the dress, we're going to be taking Emperor's Children and I'm going to be sketching out all the places that would be highlighted. Eventually I decided I wanted this miniature to be far more brighter than just Emperor's Children, so regard this as just a good way of learning how to sketch out where the highlights are. I learned a very valuable lesson while painting this miniature. You see, during filming, I accidentally dropped this miniature a whole inch on my table, and she popped off of her base like a goddamn pog. I didn't have any plastic glue, so I actually had to go out and get some in the middle of filming this. You'll want to keep layering Emperor's shoulder over, and I think building up this color really makes it stand out and what makes this miniature really pop. At this point, once I decided that I wanted the miniature to be this bright, I figured that I should reshade some of the recesses using my mixture. I used it sparingly and I watered it down just a little bit more than it was before, just to make sure that it wasn't too dark. At this point, I decided to add a little bit of ghost gray with our Emperor's children. Making this dress bright would really contrast well with the dark purple that we have going on for her horns as well as her face.
Now that we have these super stark highlights, I'm going to be blending it all together with a nice glazing of Emperor's Children mixed with Lamian Medium. I like this method of glazing as it dulls down the bright highlights, but it also shades a little bit in the recesses. Here I'm shading the bow staff with some Army Painter Light Tone. This is watered down just a little bit. I also decided to add this to our little bands on our feet, just to add kind of a warm and kind of dirtied up color considering the environment I'm going to be putting her in. She's looking pretty good so far, I think. I accidentally did this off camera, but I added just a little metallic to the belt buckle. I'd also go ahead and shade this with her light tone. Very sparingly, of course. After shading the horns with Nuln Oil, I decided to build the color back up by adding just a little bit more Kaldor Sky to the edges. You can see up here I would also apply just a little bit of our white and pink mixture, just for an extra blendy highlight. So I tried filming painting the eyes for this video and uh... I fixed them off camera but I'm really sorry. I'll try better next time. Okay, changing gears. Here I'm dry brushing her snout with a little bit of Jean Steeler purple and I'm building up the brightness with just a tad of ghost gray. This adds a soft blend to her big fat sneezer and some texture to her skin. Scales. Something like that. Since her arms are just barely exposed, I wanted to add in just a little bit more stark highlighting as well as some stark shadows. I think making them stand out more from the dress is a good way of making it actually look like she has purple flesh underneath besides just her face and her tail. Using some severely watered down Kaldor Sky, Still mixed with the Nagaroth Knight. I dry brushed over the horns just to make it blend a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if this was a good idea or not. Um, obviously the end result I'm happy with. I feel like I could take or leave this last part. Mixing a little bit more Elvic Flesh with the Sepia, I decided to re-highlight the staff after his shade. I'd slowly build up the color on the bow, and just kind of add in just little flecks along the side, just to make it look a little bit more natural. I apologize for the camera work at this part.
After doing so, I would take some severely watered down light tone and just reintroduce it all over the staff. Not too much, but mostly in the recesses to darken it down. I had previously painted the base using black and dry brushing over with a bright white. Here I'm going to be doing a heavy and overall thick dry brushing of light green and medium olive from Vallejo Model Color. This is to give the effect of a foresty, mossy stone. Once it was done dry brushing, I just decided to put on some flicks of little pebbles and sand, just to add a little bit more texture to the top. I then put over a good amount of Garagax sewer. This is just to put a little bit more color and earthy tones onto the sand. We would also blend this color a little bit with the medium olive, and I would add just a small amount of static grass to the top of the dirt. As a nice little way to finish off the dress, I thought of something kind of weird. I decided to use metal medium from Vallejo, and I watered it down severely and then slowly spread it all over the pink attire. I wanted the dress to have a cartoonishly satin pink, and I think this worked out pretty well. Unfortunately in photography, you can't exactly see the satin finish to it. Uh, I had to blend some pictures together to actually get this shot. But I think this looks really awesome, and I think it looks really unique. Hey everyone, I really hope you liked this video, and I hope you learned something new from it. This series is actually something that I've been planning on for the most part regarding this channel. I think having more of a motivation to keep working and learning new methods is something that I ultimately want to do with this. And I love teaching people how to paint. I'm the kind of guy that will give so much extra criticism slash feedback that nobody really asks for. And I think this is a good way of condensing it down and me just actually doing something rather than just spouting my mouth. If you have any ideas for videos that you'd like to see, don't be afraid to ask me in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked what you saw. This channel is growing just a little bit, and I've met some new people that I've been really wanting to collaborate with as far as painting, and as far as making further content. Next week I'm going to be doing another painting tutorial regarding the Adeptus Custodes. This was a request shouted out by Uncle Sam. This guy gave me a shout out on his previous video, this guy makes some cool ass content, you should check him out. Occasionally I'll put out a video or two of us playing some games together in Warhammer games or anything that might just seem fun for the channel. Just to add in some more content and anything to get more stuff out quicker. Uh, considering the algorithm is now picking up my videos, I would like to capitalize on it and make as much content as possible. Um, I will not do as many shorts, but I will do them when needed. Uh, I think they are helpful regarding algorithm, but I, f I like to make larger videos. I, I don't particularly enjoy making the shorts, but I think they do serve a good purpose. Plus, like I said, if you have a specific problem regarding the hobby or you need a specific tutorial, I will do my best to provide it if you ask me. I know how it feels to be looking for a hyper specific tutorial and you're just unable to find it. And then days later you accidentally find something regarding that problem in a tutorial that doesn't even address that as the main focus. So I want to be here for any questions that you guys have, um, and I will do my best to provide. Anyway, I'm going to close my beak, mishmash, kitbash, and paint some fantastic miniatures. And you're gonna, I promise.
See ya. Where the hell is he? He's supposed to be here an hour ago. The show's all finished. He's not even- he didn't even show up. Oh, Jesus, are they fucking- Hello? Hey man, I was Where just poking some Arby's. I got a bunch of sandwiches. Well, I, I haven't got the sandwiches yet. I figured I'd bring some back for you. This sounds good, right? No, the show is over. What do you even do around here? I'm like a comic relief guy. Come on. What? Now, you better do something funny next week, or you're, you're out of here. You're done. You're done so. Right, right. I'll do a bit called uh, The Bone Zone. We'll do a section like that. <sighs> okay. That's gimmicky. But it's something. I'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Okay.